Hi, uh, production freeze during holidays is affecting my weekly video, but as always there is something new in Databricks or something which I haven't mentioned before. Uh, my topics for today include, first, uh, the most significant update, which is direct mode in asset bundles. Uh, second, uh, Databricks assistant agent mode is in public preview, uh, single use refresh tokens, uh, partition column changes, and a few updates to dashboards. So let's start. Okay, we are in Visual Studio Code and uh, here is asset bundle. So let's, uh, let's deploy it. Databricks bundle deploy, classic comment. And uh, till now, always uh, the state in Terraform were created. So Terraform was uh, default uh, deployment, uh, deployment mode. Uh, I think uh, thanks that uh, thanks to the fact that Terraform was used, it was uh, it was like it was faster to uh, to create uh, Databricks asset bundle projects. But now, when the project is ma mature, there is new direct mode without Terraform. It, it's uh, solving few problems. Uh, for example, uh, one problem is that in enterprises you have to whitelist firewall to get Terraform. Uh, also, there is quite overhead, so it can be much slower than direct mode. And there are a few other uh, improvements which, uh, which I will show you. So, okay, so let's wait for our deployment. Okay, deployment is complete and we can see that Terraform uh, uh, state were created. And now we have a uh, command Databricks bundle deployment migrate, which will create direct mode, which has a really simple state, which is just in JSON file. So uh, let's migrate it. And after migration, I will uh, perform a clean deployment to, uh, to workspace. So we'll see what was deployed there. Uh, we'll look to the state. Uh, of course, here on our local machine, we still can see Terraform because we can always undo the migration. Okay, migration is done and I deleted previous deployment from the workspace. So we are making a new clean deployment. So let's get start, not migrate, but deploy. So let's look uh, at the workspace, how, uh, how new direct deployment state uh, looks uh, so here we have bundle uh, folder with state and here is state file and we can see that there is no longer terraform state uh, we we just have few json and for example resources json is really simple so we can look at it so we can see here every uh, every resource and ID assigned. So also it's easy to get again information from that JSONs files. Uh, it's it's a really nice structure. There is also metadata file. We can look here. And also it's deployment file with details of the uh, of uh, previous deployments. Uh, so it, it can control state. So we, we see that it's just free JSON files, so it's, uh, it's really easy and it's working the same as Terraform, so it's much more faster. Also, before it was a problem for Databricks because uh, they couldn't uh, often add something to bundles because they had to wait for a new version of Terraform for a new Databricks provider. And now it's really fast because they are independent, so they can add, just add here uh, more resources, so I think whole uh, implementation uh, and uh, new features which are coming to bundles will be the, will be introduced much more faster, especially regarding AI, because it will be it will be not dependent on Terraform anymore. Of course, still Terraform is uh, a default mode. That one is experimental, but I think soon it will be in beta, and uh, then it will be. Uh, it will be default mode. When we are at asset bundles, also during December, the new resource were added to uh, to the bundles, which is alerts. So it's a really simple YAML with alerts. Uh, we define here warehouse audd, we define query, and we define evaluation when uh, the alert is triggered. 
And we can see to our deployment that uh, that alert was deployed and we can see that it's <coughs> it's here. So that's another, another news. Another news is that assistant agent mode is in public preview, so it's available to everyone. So if you have, if you go to assistant and you open it, okay, it's really big. We can close that. Uh, we can see that we have few modes. Uh, before default was chat. Now it's agent is recommended, and that agent mode can edit your. Uh, notebooks, it can edit your data by executing uh, SQL or Python. And you can reference here objects. So for example, I, I have here example, write code to analyze table customer. Okay, and use also insight from notebook secret comments. And when we when we execute it, it's uh, performing multi-step analyze. So it's not uh, uh, not uh, simple like before in chat, it was just running uh, response, but it's for example, reading table structure, then depends on that, it's getting some SQL samples, then creating for us code, which we, which we can use to analyze data. Uh, let's wait uh, wait a few seconds and we will uh, we will see the, the results so we can see that it took the samples now it's starting editing a notebook to perform uh, perform some uh, analysis of our data so we can use in our projects we can see that it uh, it's showing more um, it's showing more and more and editing more and more cells uh, so, uh, for example, like analyze customer segments, analyze account balance statistics. So it's preparing for us the whole, uh, the whole notebook, and then later we can we can polish it. And now it's a running notebook. We can set uh, mode. Uh, I set it as always allow, but maybe sometimes it's better to have ask every time, because it can <laughs> actually edit your your data so so maybe it's better to to review what what is doing but we can we can allow allow agent also run uh, uh, run by by his own and we see that uh, agent made some error so it failed and now is dele deleting all the cells because uh, it decided that there is a mess. So we can see on that example, uh, previously when I tested it, it worked better. Yes, but actually it's LLM. So, so maybe it's better to actually not allow, uh, allow it to, to run uh, by his own uh, code. Yes. And now it's, uh, it's uh, trying again to analyze the data. Okay, so it's running again uh, all cells with to analyze the data. Uh, let's keep it running. But another example, which I'm, which actually I'm frequently using, is like uh, show sample of, and we can choose a table. Yes. Okay, still finishing the previous one, and also it shared with, with us what what the agent analyzed about our data. And when we sh when we write something simple like show sample, it's just uh, it's just generating SQL. So let's wait a bit, and then it's running it. Yes, so that's quite uh, quite simple. So. We c and also in in the end, it uh, it wrote some additional information. Uh, I think uh, you can find it useful uh, because it's much more powerful than previous assistant. Uh, so especially for data scientists, I think can be useful because it can uh, it can analyze for you some data. Uh, and uh, and find some insights so your your job uh, with notebooks can be much more faster 
Uh, another update which I would like to mention about is uh, single use refresh token. Uh, let's close the assistant. Uh, that uh, that refresh token maybe it's are not so important for everyone. It's more for administrator. If you are in uh, account console, you have this uh, app integration uh, in that uh, in that uh, console. I don't have so much. And when we when we are in some like let's say prophecy, yes. Uh, app connection, we have a refresh, a refresh token in minutes uh, and it's using some refresh token to refresh our access token, yes? And now it's possible to set that that refresh token is single use. So every time it has to generate new refresh token, so it's more secure. We don't have yet option in UI just to tick it, but, uh, but in there is a CLI and API that we can uh, we can change it to to true. I guess that soon it will be also here. But for some connectors, like for Power BI, it's by default uh, to use refresh single use refresh token because there are no other options. And another update which is related to partition columns. I, Actually, it was mentioned in uh, runtime 18, but I think it was uh, uh, it was changed uh, some uh, some time ago. So let's uh, le let's start our cluster and let's take a look at it. Uh, before when we uh, wrote uh, partition classic uh, table which is uh, partitioned uh, with classic partition uh, it was uh, written uh, that partitions to delta log and also to folder names but now that behavior changed and that partition column is also included in parquet if you use managed table it really doesn't affect you but for some use cases with external tables, if there, there are other clients, especially older clients, which are reading that, uh, that table, it can, uh, it can affect you, yes, because it can take the field uh, two times. But let's take a look at it. So we partition uh, that small table by event date. And so we can, we can see here it's table one. It's partitioned by event date, so here we have partition columns, and also we had it in delta log. But now, if we if we copy that file, so let's copy this outside of delta location. So, for example, here, here, uh, let's copy the name of the file. Uh, let's put here and read it read it uh, as a as a parquet. Uh, okay, I think it was a sm small mistake. Uh, it didn't correct automatically. Okay, it will be like this. Yes. Now we can see in a parquet file that, that here, uh, here we have also uh, the event date column. Uh, so it's not only anymore in data delta log and in uh, in that folders which is like hive partitioning style uh, but but also directly in parquet it's mentioned in runtime 18 uh, that it was introduced but actually i checked uh, all the runtimes as well and uh, and it's uh, it's also there because i think it's the part uh, related to uh, to Delta Liber actually, and uh, the reason the I think it's good that uh, that field is here because often it's faster to retrieve it from uh, from a parquet and also this way it's compatible with Iceberg. So I think the the merge of two formats uh, is coming because that that small things which. Uh, which were different uh, between formats are now merged uh, to the to the same standard. And our last update is related to dashboards. Uh, 
uh, like every week there are some improvement uh, in dashboard but let's look to uh, to few which uh, which are quite uh, quite nice so i will click edit uh, edit draft and now we can set labels to specific field uh, so instead of auto we can change it to different field or different expression so i click field uh, it was set as some uh, revenue but let's uh, let's change it just to the to the name of the field so it was nation and we can see that here in every uh, in every part of bar chart we have the corresponding country name so it's nice that we can use uh, different fields so especially if you have quite a uh, quite big table you can do some some nice manipulation and other update is related to to sorting so for example when we have uh, x axis yes uh, that one uh, we can uh, we can sort it by different firm so field so for example we have we can have a few fields uh, which uh, explaining the same like segment uh, so for example here we can uh, we can sort by something else like customer id or total total customer revenue uh, so uh, it's offer quite uh, nice flexibility to to charts uh, because for me uh, the biggest issue always is that I want to do something with charts and then I cannot and it's frustrating so every this uh, this small option uh, is adding more flexibility how uh, how you can uh, how you can design your chart yes and uh, the last update is related to let's see published version it's related to uh, scheduling uh, if we create schedule uh, in the list of subscribers we can also add a destination and uh, newly supported destination in microsoft teams so if you register in your workspace microsoft teams uh, webhook you can send uh, image with your uh, if you're uh, with your dashboard and PDF to automatically to, for example, Teams uh, uh, channel and uh, uh, and uh, everyone will get uh, the message. Yes, uh, of course you can you can set few schedules. So one schedule can be just to up, uh, update the dashboard. Another can be like, for example, once per week to send dashboard to people. So. Uh, so they don't have even go to Databricks and can, they can browse uh, PDF. And uh, that's all update uh, from the last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I wish everyone Happy New Year. Thank you for watching.